to our online viewers, we just want to encourage you. If you're ever in our area, you are welcome to come and join us. We will make you feel welcome and well at home. Everybody give them a cheer. See how welcome you guys are. And today we just want to encourage you. You're in a great place and we want to encourage you with a great message. Imagine that you came from a deep, deep, dark jungle and that you are from a, a lost tribe that has never seen the, even basically outside that jungle. You have a, have a bone in your nose. You wear loincloth. I'm just visualizing you all in loincloth. You online as well. And you, you walk out and you, you actually get taken out of the jungle and you get your first experience. You're going to be flown to New York City and you Times Square. And so here you are. You, you go to the airport and you walk into the airport and you've been given a tracksuit or new clothes or whatever. And you're in there and you see on the ground that horizontal escalator. The first time you've ever seen one. And you look at it and you see people getting onto this machine and they stop and all of a sudden, sudden they're moving along on this moving floor and you and your friend there talking you're saying wow these guys are moving the floor is alive and you sort of think you don't know how it works but they're going somewhere and it looks exciting so you say to your friend I actually I did a translation here I was I wanted to talk about that so I, I wrote it oh I'm going to go into some notes here. Before I get there, I've got to share what we we're doing this year. 2017 is the year to commission the dream. And to commission the dream means to prepare for your future. It's an active word. Commission means doing something about your future. There's no greater way to prepare for your future than to think differently. Because if you can think higher, you will go further. You will lift your life higher. So that's what we're talking about today. And we're talking about thinking differently. So we're going to be talking about thinking about promoting your life back into our illustration now so these guys are two guys there and they're from the jungle and it's Hanak and Babuk these two guys are together and Hanak says to Babuk Ugh, Babuk raffle macho duna translation in English wow Fred check this out <laughs> and Babuk says to Hanak brr Hanak tinny bank hopscotch which means cool Cyril want to get on that and so here he is Cyril's not a great name he didn't have a lot of friends anyway but so here he was he saw the thing and the thing's moving all these people going somewhere and they're excited and they are trusting because people aren't getting hurt they're moving forward so they get on it for themselves and they're excited they're whoa this is crazy the floor's alive we're going somewhere do you know God is just like an escalator? He wants to escalate your life. He wants to take you somewhere. Isn't it amazing? So give him a cheer. It's a good thing. I've, I've, I've been to the airport and sometimes you see these escalators and they, they're not moving. You walk up to them and you get close and all of a sudden the lights come on and they start speaking to you and the floor starts moving. It's like, wow, and then you get on and then it speeds up. And then when you get off, if no one else is on it, it stops again. And so this is like God. He's waiting for us to take a step. He's so taking for us to move forward so that he can escalate us and promote us and take us somewhere in life. But if we just stand there and watch everybody else get on, they'll be taken somewhere and we'll just watch them enjoy the ride. And see, God wants each one of us to have a better life. Things to start happening in our lives that we're excited about. Anybody excited about life? Anybody excited about living? We only get to live once on this planet. The Bible says it's given once for us to die. We only get to have one life. Why not stretch it to the full? Why not experience the most we can ever experience while we're on this planet alive? And so we've got to understand that there's more for each one of us. So we've got to prepare for promotion. Prepare to get on that ride of a lifetime. And God's the one that gives a propulsion. He's the one that gives a power. And so I want to encourage you that you don't have to do it alone. All you do is take the step and start moving. And the exciting thing is when you see these escalators moving, you can get on that thing and you can run and you can race your friend. He's racing on the floor and you're killing it. You're just, you're accelerating ahead. And we're not, we're not about beating others, but we are about having a better life on this planet. So Psalm chapter 75, verse 6 and 7 says, For promotion and power come from nowhere on earth, but only from God. And this is talking about true promotion. You know, Peter, he was out fishing. He was still catching fish before he met Jesus. But when Jesus got on his boat that one day, Jesus finished talking and he said, Hey, Peter, I want to teach you a lesson. Cast your net out here. He put his net out and his boat almost sank. I want you to understand that you can do great things without God, 
But then when he gets on your boat, he will blow your mind. So let me encourage you with that. We must set uh, step into the escalator. We must, and we're going to talk a little bit about preparing for promotion today. So how do we prepare for promotion? There's a word called stewardship, to be a steward. And I want to talk a little bit about that first. A steward is a person who is employed or put to work or trained to manage another person's property, especially a large house or an, a massive estate. You study the word estate and it simply means a realm of resources. And so God has an infinite realm of resources for every human on the planet to start to manage and maintain and steward. So what are these resources? Let's have a look what we can steward. You can steward money. You can steward relationships. That's marriage, children, family, everyone in your oikos or your society. You can start to have relationships with them. You can start to work with gifts and talents on your own life. Your thoughts, your emotions, your mindsets. These are all commodities that we can start to steward. Your time. Time management is huge. You, we don't have a lot of time on this planet. Maybe 120 or 130 years compared to eternity. That's just a blink of an eye. And so we have time time to manage and steward it is something that we work with our health our bodies healing and our lives to, to live long and prosper how does how does he do that <laughs> and so we got to, we got to understand that there's good things for every one of us but it comes through stewardship through managing the resources that God has given us that is what we do to step onto that that thing so I want to talk briefly about what does this stewardship do it looks like effort Yes, someone say effort, effort, organization, preparation, work, training, diligence, energy, management, motivation, perspective, perseverance, character, purpose. These are all things we do. That's us lifting our little foot and putting it on the escalator. But what does God do? The moment we put our foot on there, he promotes us, which means blessing, favor, anointing, grace, Power, inspiration, opportunities, promotion, escalation, elevation. He's the one that brings the power to take us forward in life. He's the one that put all those fish in Peter's net. He's the one that showed him where to go. And so I want to encourage you to allow him on your boat, allow him to teach you to be a good steward. Now, stewardship is attractive. Living a life of promotion is attractive. Our two friends from the jungle, they're in the airport. They're noticing that floor moving. They're noticing something amazing that people are going somewhere, putting in no effort, it seems. And so your life, as you're moving forward, as your life has taken off to a new direction, it's going to be attractive to people around you. People are going to look at you moving on. That's what people like about you guys, is the fact that you're raising up, you're going further. Things are happening in your life. That is attractive. It says in 1 Corinthians 4.2, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. That word faithful means fruitful. Why? So the whole world can see your life progressing. We're here for a reason. We are living letters. We are signs to a, a world that there is a God and he is good. He's not a religious old guy up there waiting to hit you with a stick. No, he can't get old. He's eternal. He doesn't grow a beard. He's a spirit. And he's there. He loves us and wants to have the best life lived through us. Why? We are an expression of the greatest king. Do you know a king has a kingdom, a domain, and we are called subjects in his kingdom. And a great king is represented by great subjects. And their lives go on. They go wonderfully great. How bad would God be? To have subjects that are living terribly sad lives he'd be a bad god no god is immense infinite wonderful exciting and so i want to encourage you as you become a steward of god he will promote and accelerate your life forward finally i'm going to just give my quick little illustration of my life today we get to talk about finances this is the first week in this illustration we're talking about finances relationships stewarding emotions our health and healing so many different areas of our life when I first met my wife, I was struggling financially because I was not a very good steward. How do I know? Well, I didn't have any money. I was not a very good steward of money because I didn't have it. I was a waster. I wasn't, I wasn't organized. I wasn't preparing. I was very generous. I basically gave it all away because I didn't understand the value of having it and working with it wisely. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 24, this will excite you, the crown of the wise 
is their riches. If you're a wise guy, any wise people, your crown is your riches. And so it's not wrong for us to talk about wealth and riches. In actual fact, if you start to learn to be a godly steward of riches and you don't do it alone on your boat alone, you get Jesus on your boat, he'll fill it up full of fish and and you get on that escalator, he'll help you and promote you and take you forward. He will put his grace, put all his blessings on your life and promote you for the world to see. Whoa, there is a good God. I go into schools, give him a cheer, he's all right. He's our God. (laughs) Finally, I go into schools and I talk to students about about um, about relationships and, and, and my wife and how I met her. And hormonal. You know, teenagers are hormonal. Hormones everywhere. Some of you are hormonal too. So hormones everywhere. And this, you talk about a girlfriend or a boyfriend and they're all ears. And I said, I prayed for a wife. And I said, God, make her beautiful. And I met her and she was absolutely hot. And I showed a picture around the classroom of my wife and they'd be like, oh, that's awesome. And I'd finish off saying, God does answer prayer. And so can I encourage you that if you can be a sign to the world in the way you live life, you'll show him off as a good God. My wife's going to talk a little bit of how to be a steward, be a promoted person for his glory. So turn to the person beside you this morning and say, prepare for promotion. Prepare for promotion. If we think better, we'll live better. And so we are preparing for promotion. And so we are on this series, and we're going to talk about how to steward, how to manage all the different areas of your life over the next five weeks. But this morning, we get to kick off the very first one with money, with our finances. And I was thinking about why should we do finances first? Why do we do money first? Well, seven out of ten people who come to church who need counseling and need advice, it is over money problems. And so we recognize that finances are a big part of our life, a big part of our world, and so it's important that we learn from the Word of God how to steward and manage our finances. You know, someone may say, well, all churches want is your money. No, all Walmart wants is your money, right? All Walmart wants is your money, and so God wants you to learn how to manage so that he can promote you. There are 27 parables in the Bible, and 23 of them deal with finances, and there are over 2,000 verses in the Bible on money, and so God has a lot to say about how we can manage the resources and the provision he puts in our life. Billy Graham said this, if a person gets his attitude towards money straight, it will help straighten out almost every other area of his life. And so we're going to start first with the finances. So we want to prepare for promotion. The first principle today, how do you prepare for promotion, is number one, stewards know that God owns everything. A good steward, a good manager knows that God owns everything. Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. A good steward knows it all belongs to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 26 says, For the earth and every good thing belongs to the Lord and is yours to enjoy. So the foundational principle of stewardship is understanding that God owns it all. The second principle of the, on the path to promotion is understanding that stewards understand that our money comes from God. Romans chapter 11 verse 36 says, everything comes from the Lord. All good things were made because of him and will return to him. And so Deuteronomy chapter 8 says this, if you start thinking to yourself, I did all this, all by myself, I am rich, it's all mine. Well, think again. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all this wealth so as to confirm his covenant. And so sometimes people will say, well, no, God didn't give me the money. I worked hard for my money. You know, I did this myself. And the scripture says if you start going in that train of mindset and you start thinking, I did this all myself. I, I I began to make all this money all myself. It said, think again, because it is God who gave you the strength to create that wealth. It is God who gave the breath in your lungs so that you could breathe and create that wealth. It is God who gave you the talents and the abilities on your life so that you could create that wealth. It has come from God. Now, some people are able to make money without involving God, but I believe they still limit themselves. 
someone has said to me, well, you know, I, I've already made a million dollars without God. Well, that's good for you, but what could you do with God. What could you do with God in the boat? Your talents are working on their own. God has given you the strength, but if you begin to recognize, if I get God in the boat, what could God do with me? What could God begin to bless me with if I'd allowed God in the boat of my life? The third principle on the path to promotion is that stewards realize management prepares us for promotion. Matthew chapter 25, verse 29 says, For the man who uses well what he is given, even more will be given. And he shall have abundance. Say the word abundance. But from the man who is unfaithful, even with the little responsibility he has, will be taken from him. And so we have to understand that a steward understands that management prepares you for promotion. So the first part of management is tithing. We begin to understand that we separate God's portion. We return that to him. That's the basics. Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 23 says, The purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your life. So that's just the first part of management. Then as we begin to understand the second part of management is we become generous people. We begin to sow and we begin to give and we allow generosity to rise on the inside of us. Proverbs 28 verse 22 says, the stingy are eager to get rich and unaware that poverty awaits them. So they're, they're eager to do it in their own strength. But as we manage, we begin to learn that generosity is the language of God. And we can to begin to put that into practice in our life. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 to 8 says, For God loves and he takes pleasure in. He prizes above all other things and is unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. And so we understand that's part of management is we learn to be a generous person the same way that we teach our children when they're small. We teach them to be generous. We teach them to share. That's part of management as we learn these principles. And then we begin to learn that the third part of management is our spending and our investing. We begin to know what to spend and what to invest. Do you know that you were never meant to spend everything? I know that's quite a concept in our world and our culture today, but you were never meant to spend everything that comes into your hands. And God has a system, and the Bible talks about investing and multiplying what he puts into your hands, that God brings something into your hands so that you can invest it, and he can bless it, and it can begin to grow, and you will prosper. And so he talks about two kinds of seeds, the seed of your offering that you place in the ground, and then the seed of your investment that you put in the ground, the seed of their investment into your business that you put in the ground where he can bless you and he can begin to prosper you and prepare you for promotion. And so we need to learn how to manage what God has given us. We have to learn self-control. We have to learn to be led by the Spirit. We have to learn how to be able to practice faith and patience. We have to learn how to be wise with our money. When we begin to learn how to multiply what God has given us. Matthew chapter 25, verse 23 says, Well done, my good and faithful servant, said the master. For you have been faithful in managing small amounts, so I will put you in charge of large amounts. So we're not waiting for one day, someday, we're going to learn how to manage our money. When I have a lot of money, then I'll learn how to manage it properly. No, the pathway to promotion is you start with the small. You start with the little, and you begin to learn how to manage that, and God can promote you, and he will bring more into your life. So this week I was, you know, purchasing something from a lady, and, and this particular lady, she said, I'm tired. And then she said, I'm old. And I said, well, how old are you? And she told me her age, and she said, I've worked for this company for a long time, and I'm just tired, and I'm old. And she said, so I don't enjoy it as much as I used to. And so I said to her, well, you know, with your age, you're, you're getting close to retirement now. And she said, no. 
When my husband and I were young, we were so stupid with our money. We were so bad with our money that I'm going to have to work to the day I die now. And so, you know, of course, I go into pastor mode and, you know, I'm trying to help. It's never too late. You can start now. You know, I'm trying to help her right in the middle of this, of this situation. But, you know, I was thinking about that, that that's where a lot of people are at. And yet God never designed us to be like that. He designed us to be a good manager. He has designed us, and it doesn't matter what age you are. You could be young. It's time to start managing. You could be old. It's time to start managing. God has a system and a plan for you to begin to prosper and you to begin to go through life and, and you begin to increase. The Bible says, may you increase more and more, you and your children. He wants to take you forward financially, not where you're struggling and feel like I'm going to be working to the day I die. No, I a steward understands I must manage what I have. You know, we have counselors and, and staff that are here to help you to learn how to manage your finances, help you to learn how to know what to do with things. And, you know, there are times that you have to recognize as you're going to go through this process, learn how to manage it, you might have to say no to McDonald's for a while. You might have to say no to Starbucks for a while. Can I tell you all McDonald's wants is your money. All Starbucks wants is your money. But God has a plan to prosper you, and God wants to promote you. And if you begin to become faithful with the little, he will give you more. He will bring much into your life. And so the fourth principle on the path to promotion is that stewards act in a way that God can trust them. Luke chapter 16, verse 10 and 11 says, Whoever can be trusted with small things can also be trusted with big things. Whoever is dishonest with little things will be dishonest with big things too. If you cannot be trusted with the worldly riches, who will trust you with the true riches? There's another scripture, another translation, and it says, Who will trust you, trust you with the riches of heaven? And so we understand from the scripture that God said the first test on whether or not I can trust you is how you handle your money. That's why we did this lesson first. Next week we get to do relationships, right? But we did this one first because he said the first test on if I can trust you is going to be with the provision, the wealth. If you can be faithful with worldly wealth, then I can trust you with influence. I can trust you with what I'm doing in the realm of the spirit. I can trust you with what's going on in the world. He said, I can trust you with the greater things if I can first trust you with the worldly wealth. So your question is then, Am I faithful? Am I faithful? Am I learning about how to manage the resources that God places into my life? Luke chapter 12, verse 42 to 43 says, And the Lord said, Who then is faithful and a wise steward of the estate, whom the master will put in charge, blessed, happy, prosperous, and to be admired is that servant whom the master finds doing it when he arrives. It says that that steward who is wise and who is faithful, it says that he is blessed, he is happy, he is prosperous, and he is to be admired. How many think that is the pathway to promotion? And he said it is being a steward and learning how to manage what God has given you. The last one this morning, the fifth principle on the path to promotion is that stewards are confident that God rewards the faithful with more. They're confident that if I am faithful with a little bit, God will reward me with more. That God is a rewarder of those who seek him, who learn his principles and put his principles into, into action in their life. That he is a rewarder, that he blesses them. The same way as parents, when we see a child handling things right, when we see a child that they can do what's right with their money, then we want to bless them. Then we want to help them. But when we have a child that's wasting and they don't understand and it's just going out as fast as it comes in, that's not the first child that you want to give more to. You want to teach them first to manage. So a steward understands that if you're faithful, God will bless you with more. God will give you greater opportunities. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 2 says, All these blessings will come to you in abundance if you obey the Lord your God. You begin to look at how you spend your money. You begin to look at, at where things are going. And you begin to manage it. And God will bless you with more. Most people are afraid, well, I might have to sacrifice my coffee. I might have to sacrifice this. Can I tell you, if you'll learn how to manage it, you will have more. You will have more. God will bless you with more as you learn to manage. And so the pathway to promotion 
is recognizing first, it all comes from God. We are not our own source. God is our source. God is the one who gave us the talents, the abilities, the breath in our lungs, the strength this week. He is our source. And we are a steward, a manager of what he puts into our hands. And if we are faithful, he will give us more. Proverbs 3 verse 6 says, In everything you do, put God first. And he will direct you. There's a promise for you. If you put him first, he will direct you. He will give you the wisdom. He'll show you where to go and he'll show you where not to go. He'll show you what to be involved in and he'll show you what not to be involved in. If you put him first, he will direct you. And he will crown your efforts with success. It's going to take some effort. You got to put that foot on. You got to get on. You can't just be watching everybody else get on and, and it seems like oh, it's so easy for them. It seems that they just coast through life. No, you got to put your foot on and say, God, I'm a steward. God, you're blessing me. There, you put something in my life. God, I'm a steward. You get on that thing. And it says that he will bless your effort. It's going to take some effort, but he's going to bless the effort. He's going to crown your effort with success. He's going to enable you to prosper and go forward so that you can be a tremendous blessing to other people. So Matthew chapter 6 verse 21, why did we start the entire series first with money? Why did we leave it to the end? Why did we do the first part of the series about money? This is the scripture. Matthew 6 21, your heart will be where your treasure is. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So we deal with first things first. Money is the closest thing to people's hearts. Do you ever notice that? That's the first thing people can get mad about is money. Why? Because wherever your treasure is, there your heart is. So if you can deal with that, if you can learn how to manage and steward the resources that God places into your hands, then dealing with your time and your relationships and your physical health and all the other areas that God gives you to steward, it's easy when you deal with the first things first. Your heart will always follow where your treasure is. So we learn to put God first in this area of our life. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes today. We're going to pray. As you're watching with us online today, we're glad that you are here to hear this message about putting God first, about how God wants to bring more into your life, that he has you on the path to promotion. We want to encourage you to make sure you're part of the entire series, that you go through every single one over and over so that God can promote your life. But we're going to pray in just a moment here, and as we pray as a community of faith, we want to agree for you. We want to pray for you as well. And so we encourage you that when we pray, out loud you pray out loud you join us today and so this morning with every head bowed and every eye closed I want to ask if you are in a position that you need to put God first maybe you're in a position today that you need to acknowledge God you are the source in my life that breath in my lungs when I woke up this morning God it was from you you made me you created me you are the source in my life or maybe you're in a place today where you say, well, I acknowledge that, but, you know, I just have a hard time involving God in my life. Can I tell you, life is better with Jesus. Life is better with Jesus in the boat. You know, God is not a taker. God is a giver. He wants to come in and he wants to help you get on the path to promotion. God wants to bless his kids. And so today I encourage you to choose to make God the leader, the true leader, the true Lord of your life. Where you say, you lead, I follow. It doesn't mean I'm perfect. doesn't mean every area of my life becomes perfect tomorrow because I prayed a prayer. No, but it means I made a decision that I've said, God, I want you to lead and I want to follow. This morning, if you're here and you need to do that with no one looking around for a moment, slip up your hand. I'd love to pray with you today if that's you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. You place your hands down. Thank you. Anyone else that you need to do that today? Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Anybody else? You place your hands down. Anybody else that you need to make that decision today? Thank you. Awesome. You know, I think it's awesome because the Bible says that when we make that decision, there is a party going on in heaven. This morning in our first service, someone said to me, you got a lot of bling on today. And I said, yep, there's a lot of bling in heaven. We're going to need sunglasses in heaven. I mean, the party that's going on in heaven, this is a minor amount of bling compared to heaven. 
But the Bible says there's a party going on in heaven. When you make that decision that you say, God, you lead, I follow. Jesus, I need you in the boat with me. I'm tired of rowing by myself. I need you, Jesus, in the boat with me. That there is a party going on in heaven rejoicing because of the decision you make. And so today I want to encourage every person in this room, those who are watching online, I encourage you to pray this prayer out loud with us, with those who've lifted their hand today to make that decision. Let's agree together today and pray this prayer out loud and say, Jesus, Jesus, thank you, thank you that you died, that you died on the cross, on the cross for me, for me today, today I receive, I receive what you did for what me, what you did for me, and I choose, and I choose this day, this day, Jesus, Jesus, I need you in my boat, I need you in my boat, I need you, I need you as the leader, as the leader in my life, in my life, I need your wisdom, I need your wisdom, I need your direction, I need your direction, and I thank you, I thank you that today, that today, everything from my past, everything from my has past, been washed away. Has Washed away. by your blood. By your blood. Today, today is a brand new start. A brand new start. And I thank you. Thank you. It's a good new start. It's a good new start. Because you, because you are the leader, are the leader in this new start. In this new start. And I thank you for thank it. Thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. <laughs>
The gummy bears, I mean, those are kind of my favorite. You know, I want, I want to keep all of that. No, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. The tenth of everything, the tenth of everything that comes into your hands. God said, you bring that, and that is mine that belongs to me. So before you go to the movies and you're stuffing your little Mike and Ikes in your purse because you don't want to pay the overpriced prices, you know, no, you got to give God ten. You got to give God ten percent. And so it's on all the tithes. Everything that comes into your life, it's your birthday money you find money on the ground all the tithes you give God the tenth it says bring it in the storehouse so there may be food in my house and test me now in this the only place in the Bible that you are allowed to test God test me now in this is the Lord of hosts if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you so great a blessing so great a blessing. Now I know that some of you, you are mature believers. You say, you know, I've already been here, done that. I do this. This is part of my life. I learned this in basic Christianity 101. Well, then that's good. I encourage you. Don't just stay there. Then you begin to, it says tithes and offerings. You begin to get it and you begin to give your offerings and you begin to give over and above. But for those of you who are new believers and you're the baby Christians and you're just starting on the journey, then you just begin to first start to separate what is already God's. You take that one out of 10. You take that 10% of everything that comes into your hands and God says he will open the windows of heaven for you. He will open it up for you. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, I don't want a closed heaven over me. I like the open heaven. And I learned this principle at 18 years old. It was actually my husband who taught me this principle. We were checking each other out, and he said, I wouldn't marry a girl who doesn't tithe. And I didn't even know what a tithe was, and I had to learn, okay, what does it mean to tithe? But you know, what a great principle, and how God has blessed our life under the open heaven. So I encourage you today to return the tithe. If that's, you're used to that, then you begin to stretch yourself, begin to learn about giving above the tithe and sowing your seed so that God can multiply you. But start at the beginning. If you've never started before, you start by honoring God with the tithe. It is his, and we return it to him. And so this morning, I want to pray for you. If you've been a tither for a long time, or you're just starting to tithe now, I want to pray for you for the open heavens over your life. We want to declare that over your life, over your finances, over your business, over your income, oh God. So I encourage you to place your hand on your envelope, and if your preferred method of giving is debit or credit, you can do so at the back of the auditorium. If you're giving with us online, we're going to pray for you today as well. And so I encourage you to place your hand on your envelope and let's agree with the word of God. Father, first of all, we thank you for provision in our life. God, you are our source, and we are so thankful that you have such an incredible provision on our life. God, we are the thankful people. When we get our paycheck, when we get our dividends, when our business income comes in, God, we are always the child that says thank you. We are always the one that says thank you, God, for provision in my life. And so, God, today we return the tithe, that 10% that already belongs to you, oh God. We return it with faith today, oh God, standing on your word that you said bring all the tithes, the tenth into the storehouse, and that you would open the windows of heaven. And so God, over the tithers of this church, we declare the windows of heaven are open, oh God. Father, we declare favor on them this week. God, we declare that you will work on their behalf this week. Whatever they touch, God, will prosper because of the open heavens. And we thank you for today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give today.